Patients often ask, what are the side effects of treatment for each of the, uh, of the individual treatment options? Well, with surgery, um, it has two major side effects beyond the risks of surgery, infection, bleeding, uh, et cetera. The two major side effects of, of the procedure are impotence and incontinence. Now, for incontinence, that's leakage of urine. Any sort of leakage, any sort of leakage is about a third of patients. And what I mean by that is people leaking when they lift something heavy or are playing tennis or when they laugh. So when you ask large groups of patients in health services research studies, do you leak, about a third of them will say yes to that question. 2% or maybe a little bit less of patients will have severe leakage, requiring additional surgical intervention by the urologist uh, or use of diaper or clamps uh, to prevent the leakage. Some of that is just the nature of the surgery. The surgery is done in such a way where the prostate is taken out and, and then when it's sewn back together, when the edges of the urethra are sewn back together, it's near where the sphincter, the muscle that controls continence, that stops the leakage, it's right near there. So mechanically, uh, sometimes patients, some patients will just leak, which is, it just kind of comes part and parcel with the surgery. Now, impotence also goes along with radical prostatectomy, and the number that tends to be uh, reported is about a 50% rate of impotence. Now, the impotence from surgery is a nerve-based imp impotence. In other words, there are nerves in the periphery of the prostate which are associated with potency. Now, these nerves are not big nerves that the surgeon can see. They're small bundles of nerves that are anatomically in an area where the surgeon, where the urologist knows where they are, and they attempt to spare those nerves in the so-called nerve-sparing radical prostatectomy. But they're not always able to do that. Uh, one reason might be that the tumor is nearby. Uh, an, another reason is, is it, these, this, these areas are hard to locate. So about 50% of patients may end up being uh, impotent. So this nerve-based impotence is cutting the telephone wires, cutting the communication uh, to allow for erections and, and potency. Now with radiation uh, side effects are a little different. Uh, Incontinence is not a primary complication or side effect of standard radiation treatments, with certainly not without a surgical intervention uh, precipitating incontinence. However, rectal problems and rectal damage are. Going back 15 years, problems with rectal damage were 15 to 20 percent of patients. With the advent of IMRT and that ability to shape dose and bring dose off the rectum and bring dose off the bladder, the risk of asymptomatic rectal bleeding, what we call a grade two complication, runs between two and four percent, depending on the study you read. And symptomatic rectal bleeding, requiring the GI doctor to go in and zap a little bleeding blood vessel in the rectum, uh, that risk is about a half a percent. So these are fairly low risk. The bladder problems that used to be associated with external beam radiation 15 years ago, 15 to 20 percent risk in those days, have fallen to less than 1 percent uh, with these new IMRT techniques and some of the other techniques that I've described to you. Now we're seeing the same risk of complications with stereotactic body radiation, the SBRT. As I mentioned before, in the permanent seed implant, the risk profile is a little different. They have a unique risk of causing urethritis, irritation of the, of the urethra, or burning on urination. And they have a, an asymptomatic rectal bleed rate of about 5 or 6 percent, more, more than the IMRT. The high dose rate interstitial implant uh, has a risk uh, profile of, uh, of complication very similar to the IMRT and the SBRT with very low rectal and bladder complications. The mechanism by which radiation causes impotence is a vascular-based impotence. It turns out that the nerves are, are basically radiation-resistant, but the vasculature is not. And what radiation does is it accelerates the aging process. If, for example, you look at a group of 70-year-olds who are potent, who receive radiation, and then look at them seven years after the radiation, about half of them are impotent. So it's the same 50% number that, that is often reported 
uh, with the radical prostatectomy. Except in that situation, what you got is 70-year-olds becoming 77-year-olds. And over that period of time, some of those folks will become impotent. And in fact, that's exactly what's happening. The radiation is accelerating the aging process. That being said, nowadays, there, there are vascular-based treatments for vascular-based impotence, the kind of impotence that radiation causes. Drugs like Levitra, uh, Cialis, and Viagra. In randomized trials, the reversal of radiation-induced impotence uh, is about 80% with these medications. Other medical conditions can affect complications such as potency. Patients with diabetes or cardiovascular disease such as a history of, of heart attacks or strokes or peripheral vascular disease have a much higher incidence of impotence in general and certainly a higher incidence of radiation-induced impotence as well. Smoking is also a predisposing factor towards impetus and impotence in general, certainly vascular disease, and smokers have a much higher likelihood of um, becoming impotent after radiation therapy.